this webinar will be recorded and I have muted all of you um, for less background noise. So for today, um, so last last week I talked to talked to you about how and what you need to get started in your project. I talked to you about what is pre-made by Kyle, what you don't need to do yourself, and then what you need to do yourself. I showed you how you can add and remove components, and I showed you what templates are available. Uh, I also showed you one of the news that Kyle is now has integration with the software versioning control system. So I can connect my Git directly uh, to the Microvision GUI, so I don't have to go through source tree or whatever that you're using. Uh, so for today, I will talk about debugging and trace with Ulink Pro. I will show you what trace and debug views are available and what you can expect uh, when you have the different availabilities. I will first I will talk to you a little bit about Coresight, and then we will end with a Q&A. So this is the typical blocks that are involved when it comes to trace and debug uh, within your MCU. So if we start from the beginning. Those of you who only have debug available, your core site will look something like this. Uh, you have a run control, breakpoint unit, and memory access unit. So you can run, stop, and single step the, your target. You can read and write to registers. You can set breakpoints and you can flash and flash your target. So this comes in, well, three different uh, interfaces. We have the classical ARM JTAG 20 pin interface, which is quite old and not so much used anymore on the Cortex MD, Cortex M. We have the the, the Cortex, the 10 pin connector called the Cortex debugger, which is a newer version. And then we have the two pin serial wire debug, which is, um, how to say, the minimum interface for doing debugging. So for those of you who have what's called the one pin trace interface, um, it's called the serial wire viewer. So your core site will probably look uh, a little bit like this. So you get the instrumentation trace macro cells and the data watch point and trace units as well. So what you can do beside the basic debug features is that you can have exceptions and interrupt execution with time and statistics. And you can use the ITM block to send messages to your debugger. So the ITM block, it has 32 ports. I will show you later on in the demonstration how it's working. So basically, you can you can send printf debug messages to your debugger without using a UART. Um, so as I said, this is the one pin trace interface. Um, so the next and the biggest, so to say, is the ITM ETM, sorry which will give you instruction trace via the embedded trace macro cell. So your course site will look something like this. And now you can also do analysis of execution history leading up to an event, uh, code coverage, uh, performance analysis. However, this requires a four pin interface for just the trace. So you usually have the Cortex debug plus ETM signals, which is a 20 pin connector. So this is how the different connectors look. At the bottom, you have the ARM JTAG, the big, the big one. And then to the left, we have the Cortex debug, which will give you basic debug features and the serial wire view. And then to the right, you have the uh, debug and ETM uh, four pin uh, interface. So as you can see, the signals to the right is a superset of the signals to the left. So you need the, 
the four trace data and the trace clock to get the ETM and to actually be able to use the instruction trace that comes with it. So what you need to do when you are going to figure out what you can use of what I'm showing today is first what core site is available at my MCU and second can I have the pins can I use the pins so the pins are not used for anything else so this you have to to check uh, to know what you can what you can do so for uh, contact information um, before we started before I start the demonstration you have me, uh, Bjorn Skjornberg, or you have, for sales questions, you can contact uh, one of my coworkers. So let's go into to Microvision. So I have pre-made, I have already done a product. So I'm using the MCB STM32 F400 board from Kyle. It has a Cortex M4 from ST, and I have full ETM available. So I have the superset, so to say, uh, and I'm using a U-Link Pro together with this board. So this is a project built on the RTX Artos that comes with Microvision. So I have five threads in total four of them is just doing some calculations and the fifth one is reading the potentiometer on my evaluation board so I can build this no problem so let's start by setting up how to use just the basic debug features no trace so you have to go into options for target you go to debug you select the debugger you're using. So in my case, it's Ulink Pro. I go into settings. So here you see that we can read the ID code of the CPU, which means that the debugger can connect to the CPU. I'm using serial wire and I have a debug clock of two megahertz. Um, I do not have any trace enabled yet. So this is left as it is and the flash memory on my device is already been defined so this comes from the device family pack which i showed you last webinar um, so if we click ok and we go into debug So let's have a look. So uh, as you can see, down here we have the source code. To the left we have the registers. And up here we have the mixed mode with the disassembly view. So the light green, light gray area is where there is no code. And the dark gray area is where there is code. So by let's say I want to set a breakpoint. I will just click within the, the gray area dark gray area and I have a breakpoint so I can step like this I can step over to step out of functions and I can step out which means I will step out of the original function call um, there is one thing that is called run to cursor which is if I mark a disassembly line in this in this window I can run until it and you see that the blue arrow is here so this is what I have marked and the yellow one is where the program counter is so if I click run so there we go so let's put a breakpoint in in a thread let's put it down here so we click run there we go so we can view variables uh, in different ways the first way is just to well hover over it and you will see that tick equals one you can add it to a watch window 
or uh, if you want to have a look uh, in memory you can add it to a memory window so this is two different ways of doing it and then you will see when next time I stop here the variable has been updated as well as the memory has been changed and with debug you can also get the call stack so we get the call stack of the threads and also to see if there's some arguments uh, within uh, the threads um, you are also able to alter values in your peripherals so if you go into peripherals and you go into system viewer let's say I would like to alter in the ADC number three which is which I'm using for my application so if I want to alter this red this value I just say well five change click enter and the value has been changed so this is quite nice and simple and also with um, with just debug you can get a view of your Artos, you get a view of the different threads you have and also with this with the new feature the, that Kyle have implemented it's called um, watermark so you will see actually how much of the stack the thread is currently taking and what's the max that it's using and also quite nice feature is that if you have in view and you have periodic window update you can if I click run you will see that the variable down here is updated on the fly uh, so you will be able to to see the when your target is is uh, actually running um, so this is what you can do if you just have the basic debug signals so you get the system and thread viewer where you see your artos you can alter values in the peripherals you can look at the variable and have it update on the fly in the watch window and in the memory window um, so let's go out of debug mode and let's enable the one pin trace interface so to be able to do that you click options for target you click debug and we have to add an initiation file for this I will show you in just a few seconds what this is um, you can click edit we have to go into settings so now we need to enable trace I have a serial wire output and I would like the ITM ports which I mentioned before so on port number zero I will be able to send printf messages and on port number 31 uh, the artos will send thread switching messages to the debugger so I will be able to to see this um, I will click OK we have the initiation file click OK so the initiation file is not something that I have done this comes with microvision so it's basically just uh, doing a function called debug setup and we're just writing this value to this address which is telling the the CPU to use the serial wire viewer like this so if I go into debug um, beside the things I had available before uh, I can now have a look in the uh, logical analyzer where if I want to show a signal on the fly so I can add the ADC value can add it to the logical analyzer so this is a 12-bit ADC so I will just change the resolution of the window like this and if I click run maybe I can zoom in a little so now you see that 
the signal is changing. So this can be read out during runtime. So it's actually me turning the potentiometer up and down like this. Uh, as I told you, we have now the availability for printf debugging. So I have just took the printf and we can see it in the serial wire debug printf viewer. So when I'm running, you will see that the printf will be printed out while I'm running. So this is quite, quite nice as well. And beside this, we can have a look in the event viewer. So this is showing the interaction of my Artos, how the threads are interacting with each other. Um, so if I click the cursor, I can measure for how long did my did did the thread execution take. Um, I get when was the sys ticks and when was the supervised call. I can also get this information about the trace exceptions uh, in a window. So here I get the statistical information of how many times and yeah, a little bit um, like this. So, so with the one pin trace interface, I will get the, the printf messages, I will get the trace exceptions, and I will get the um, information how the threads are interacting with each other, and I can also display a signal uh, within the logical analyzer. So let's go out of debug mode one last time and let's add the ETM. So now I will add the ETM for the four pin trace. So I will change the initiation file to actual for ETM. I will change my trace settings. So here in the trace port, I want to use the four bit data. I want to use the ETM and I will still like to have this available. So let's click OK. OK. So if we enter debug mode, like this. So if we just close some windows. So now if I put a breakpoint in here, if I click run, so it breaks. So now you will see that within here, where it used to be dark gray, there is some, some of them are green and some of them are still dark gray. So the green ones means that this line of code has been executed. So as you can see here in the disassembly view, you have the, we have the high level down here and then we have the instructions down here. So you see that all instructions has been executed. We can also have um, some more about code coverage so you can get a more overview of all your functions in your system. So you click update. So this will add to um, how many of the instructions has been added per function. So you can sort it on all your whole application or you can choose from which um, which C file you want to specifically look at. Um, with this also come the performance analyzer. So the performance analyzer is showing you where you spend uh, most of your time. Okay, now we have the breakpoint. And so this is giving an update on the fly of 
where you're spending most of your time uh, like this uh, so either functions or modules and then you have to drill down in the different where are you spending where are you spending the time so last but not least we have of course the trace data so if I add this so you will see here um, we have stopped at thread number three in a calculation so here I'm showing the high-level language um, like this and I can also show all which will give me all the instructions that has been executed uh, like this you can also search in the trace data to find okay where was where was the first or last that this thread was executed so the the orange orange window here denotes that it's a new function compared to the last trace record so it's just to make it a little bit easier for you to see the trace and understand it so with the ETM with the four pin trace we had the, the trace data the performance analysis uh, the code coverage and we had the well code coverage down here and you can get either calls or how much time um, was spent on each line so this is total amount of time it's showing so time and then you have the average of how long one calculation takes so I think this was it um, I will unmute you guys now I will stop